East County is the most diverse region in Oregon. It is also home to an incredible collection of international grocery stores that are the go-to shops for newcomers to the country. My name is Jessica, and I'm on a mission to discover these local gems and get to know their customers in the best way I know how, through cooking and sharing a meal. You're listening to the opening credits to Metro East's newly produced docuseries, Food Foray. In its first three episodes, host Jessica Thiessen explores the foods and cultures of Oaxaca, Mexico, Myanmar, and the country of Georgia. Georgia isn't just a state in America. It is a country that embraces a distinctive mixture of Asian, Russian, and European influences. Khachapuri is a Georgian staple dish. It's a bread gondola filled with cheese and topped with an egg. Myanmar, formerly known as Burma, has a cuisine which is entirely new to me. Today, um, we're going to make a radish soup and a beef curry, and um, we're going to make a green tea leaf salad. I'm about to learn that a region in southern Mexico called Oaxaca has a cuisine that is filled with many dishes I've never even heard of. So we are going to make some tetelas de frijol, cactus salad, and a guaje salsa. In each episode, Jessica journeys through cultural grocery stores, takes a cooking class, and hears stories of resilience and new beginnings that people have pursued in hopes of a new life. And throughout, having some fun along the way. This is a party. Yes. This is what I'm hearing. I'm hearing a party. Georgians <laughs> love to party, and they definitely <laughs> love to drink a lot of wine. In Georgia, we don't take sips. You're supposed to empty your glass, and then you refill the glass. <laughs> Cheers. Oh my goodness, is this bottoms up? Bottoms up. I'm from Bosnia. I kind of saw a story behind each thing that you could buy. It's it's like a window into the a culture in a way. That's Ivana Horvat, digital media producer at Metro East and director of Food Foray. Ivana sees food as a way to preserve one's history and retain a sense of identity as people pass their culture along to others. And I shared a passion of going to uh, international stores too. I grew up going to them with my mom as like, that's what we would do for fun. I was just really fascinated by all the different goods that are sold at stores that weren't American stores. My hope for people that aren't as familiar with the cultures that we explore in Food Foray is that they kind of listen in on the intimate conversations we have during the dinner scenes and during the cooking scenes and maybe some of their perspectives about life are challenged. Maybe some of the things that we think of as a given good or a given bad in our culture aren't actually black and white good and bad. Being challenged to know what is a cultural impression on you and your thoughts. Uh, the food is important to me because I think food uh, is a unit, unit of family, unit of people, unit of communities, and it's something that I want to share with this community. This is Amalia. She runs a Oaxacan-themed food cart called Tierra del Sol, located at the Portland Mercado in the Foster Powell neighborhood. Okay, Jessica, we have all ingredients to make our dinner. I have the cactus here, guajes to make the guaje salsa, the chili puya and the um, avocado leaves for the uh, tetela, and the cheese. In addition to the scrumptious food porn, audiences can also learn how to use a traditional Mesoamerican tool called the matate. For me, here is where the magic starts. Because I'm very f far away from my family, mm. but when I'm doing this, I feel very close. So I came, I think it was in 92, mm. when I came for the first time, singing the American dream to lift poverty from my country. It was a very um, hard, challenge that I face. I was, I was crazy, so <laughs> doing all this. Supra is a Georgian feast. It's not just eating food. It's a concept of sharing time. 
and you share your life, your ideals. It's an experience in itself. And this is Nino sharing the prices she's had to pay in pursuit of the American dream as well. Um, well, I immigrated here. I actually came to go to college. Um, I was 18 years old and I had no idea where life was going to take me, but I knew that I wanted something better than what I was familiar with. Um, the hardest part was being away from my family for the time that I was. I was not allowed to leave United States and, until I got my green card. It took nine years to get my green card. And only after I gained my citizenship, I was able to actually petition for my mom. And my mom is considered a direct relative to me. However, my brothers are not. But if I petition for my brother, the wait time is 15 to 20 years. And that's for them to even visit. This is not talking about longevity and for them to stay and live here. You know, my older brother, for instance, he's 41. If he gets to live another 25 years and I get to see him on a current schedule of every five years I go back home to see him, I get to see my brother for five times before he dies. And I don't think that's fair. <gasps> yeah, what do you like about your Burmese culture? The food. Oh. <laughs> Given the immense sacrifices and struggles, it's hard to reconcile why people continue to endure this type of hardship. In Myanmar, in, in every ID, name, race, religion. So just check your ID. Oh, this guy's Buddhist, this guy's Christian, this guy Muslim. So that's really easy to dis discriminate. We have this pain until today. I'm thinking about my son. I don't want to happen again to his life because the child's innocent. The system is the problem. The problematic system is the ethnic and religious persecution that Stefan faced in Myanmar. Since Myanmar is made up of 135 different ethnic groups and several religions, people have gotten used to the caste divide. So from Burma to Singapore to Gresham, exactly. Oregon. Yeah. Wow. What brought you here specifically? Um, we are um, looking for his future and we just moved here. Stefan left Myanmar for Singapore where he met his wife. They then had a son together, Noah. However, due to being treated as third-rate citizens, Noah wasn't allowed to receive an education. So they immigrated to Oregon in 2022. Georgia is known to be a little paradise on Earth. And after communism fell, we went into this deep recession. And then that's when everything went away. And coffee, I don't know why coffee was so accessible, but coffee and tea. So you would just drink this hot water trying to fill your belly and give yourself some sense, false sense of satiety that just did not happen. Mm -hmm. So now you're slowly coming out of that era and trying to make changes, but that mentality never dies. I've always dreamed of living in a better place. I love being in, here in America and not experiencing the um, hunger that I have as a child growing up. Should there be such a steep price to pay to have equitable access to basic human needs like housing, safety, education, and opportunity? I have a American dream. I have my house now. I give education to my children. But uh, those years here, oh my God, I can I express this, uh, how you miss home? Home is where you make it, but I don't think it should be this hard to create a home and reserved only for those lucky few who have won the geographic lottery. And I love this country because uh, this country gave me the opportunity to have the things that I don't have there. America can be multiple things at once, a safe haven and refuge, and also inhumane in its evaluation of who is deserving. Food is just critical to humanity, in my opinion, in a way of expression of art and culture and connection. Food is it. And back to Jess, Food for Ray's host. But around that food, we had these conversations about what really mattered to these unique families from these very different places from around the world and understanding where they were coming from and what they were looking for enabled me to understand more about what I am looking for and how I can connect to other humans no matter where they're from. As a part of the Portland Eco Film Festival, you can catch Food for Ray yourself this upcoming Saturday the 29th, 3 p.m. at the Hollywood Theater. The screening will be followed by a Q&A and a chance to eat some of the foods featured in those episodes.
Hey, welcome home. Thank this you. is my home. Mingalaba. Mingalaba. Yeah. What a beautiful home. Yeah, be yourself. <laughs> oh, always. For X-Ray FM, I'm Paul Kim.